I think a lot of the times, like, stuff that I say or do doesn't matter, you mm-hmm. know? Like, nobody, like, you know, like, I'm just doing this because I'm supposed to do it. Right. Or my sponsor is telling me to do it or, you know, whatever. But I I remember the people in early recovery that stuck out to me. Like, I remember the person that got me into treatment. Yeah. And I remember, you know, the people that came and shared their story mm-hmm. in my treatment center. Mm-hmm. And I remember, you know, people getting up and speaking and, and, and little things would stick with me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I still remember those five years later. And right. sometimes I... I hold on to those things, mm-hmm. you know, because they're easy to get away. But I love what just happened between you two yeah, and the yeah. fact that Rachel remembered that because I remember seeing people and, you know, mm-hmm. I would just be like, that person is lying. Like, yeah. there's no way that they could right. stay mm-hmm. sober for a year right. Like, right. or even 60 days. Like, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. I could barely put one six day, hours together. Exactly. One day was unfathomable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it also, you know, when it's times like that because of you're one of the first women that I saw that had her makeup together. I remember in my using day seeing somebody <laughs> seriously like you put makeup on. Like how does it look good? You know, just how do you even feel good? Because I know if you put makeup on, I know that you were able to look in the mirror and look at yourself and feel good about mm-hmm. yourself. And it took me a long time to be able to look in the mirror. Um, or like people, I, I know the feeling that you're yeah. talking about. Like people driving their kids to like sports events or like going to the that? gym right. and there's like even go like going to the grocery store yeah oh no. i couldn't me, no. right? yeah it was like, like so i wouldn't even eat yeah how would i go to the grocery store like, but and there was there's a, life a moment between like 4 a.m and this when the sun comes up mm-hmm. and like you've been up all night and the birds are starting to chirp and like the world's starting to going and that to me Mm -hmm. the sun's coming out the birds are chirping people are jogging Mm -hmm. and you're just inside alone Mm -hmm. that to me is the worst Mm -hmm. of it that moment of like wanting to be on the outside but Mm -hmm. being stuck on the inside Mm -hmm. and feeling Mm -hmm. so disconnected from the world yeah yeah i didn't want to lose my kids i love my kids Mm -hmm. but let's be honest how much could i love my kids when i wasn't loving myself Mm -hmm. Um, I was very fearful. I didn't want to lose them. It finally got to a point where um, the people I was hanging out with, they came and robbed our house and um, they sold everything and they took knives to my kids' bed. I mean, everything, it was just a disaster. The situation, the stuff I was doing, um, it was time. And I know that a lot of people won't understand this, but this is true. Um, I loved my kids so much that I let them go. That's how much I loved him. I was not being any type of woman or any type of mom. Um, I gave them over to their dad. So I signed court papers that said I would be clean for a year and then I could get them back. So I'd go through rehab um, and be clean for a year and I'd drug test at his discretion. Um, And that's how much I loved him. I feel like if you really truly love your kids, okay, well, this this is my opinion. Um, that you need to work on yourself. Yeah. I, I completely lost myself as a human being mm-hmm. and I needed to find myself before I could love anybody else. I ended up just using more. I was, I was, I was back then I was kind of relieved. I was like, oh, I could just use more. And I ended up being homeless. Mm-hmm. Um, and just uh, my using got worse. Um, it was almost like a sense of freedom. Like, yeah, I can just use, I don't have to worry about them. Like what kids that's what it what that's what it felt like i mean that's what kind of person i was being i mean yeah that's what kind of person i was being that's the woman i was back then and then i remember the first time my kids could be alone with me in the car because they had to be monitored and watched i couldn't do anything alone with my kids nothing without their dad or stepmom there they had to be with them everywhere i couldn't take them to the bathroom I couldn't go anywhere with them Mm -hmm. at all for two and a half years Um, but I remember the first time they could ride in my car oh my gosh that now this simple reminder is just like we're sitting here today it's so nice to be able to talk about it and tell your story because then you you remember the simple reminders Mm -hmm. of why you got sober and the simple little things in your life Um, yeah I got them back and I thought oh wow 
you know, you fight so hard. I've been fighting for two and a half years for this moment right here. And then it was there. But then I got scared because I'm like, oh, it's here. Mm-hmm. Now what? And I want you to hear me say thank you for your honesty, your courage, mm. your openness. Because this is the rawness of it, Rach. You just shared a whole lot on so many different levels. And I want to just pause and slow it down to recognize that. (laughs) Thank you. Because you have no idea the impact of the vulnerability that you just opened up to. And how that can now be heard and the message of hope and strength and courage that there is in that. 